Hi everyone, uh, I'm here with my colleague from JPL, Amila. And um, Amila, tell us about what you do at JPL. Um, so I work on testing for the next Mars rover mission, Mars 2020, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be sampling and taking core samples from uh, Mars rocks and then storing them, hopefully for the eventual Mars sample return. So the actual um, acquisition of samples, like like taking samples and then storing them, that's something new. We haven't yes. done that before. Yeah, we've never done that before. Obviously, you've talked a lot about drilling on Mars. Yeah. Um, this is not nearly as deep. Um, we're just taking 70 millimeters, um, so a couple inches of rock chunks. They bis basically look like pieces of chalk almost, mm -hmm. and they get stored inside of these sample tubes that are inside of our drill bits, and then we have to seal them shut and then somehow get them onto the surface of Mars and leave all the tubes in a pile. And the idea behind that is that eventually... Eventually, Mars sample return will happen. So there's a lot of different concepts going on right now. So we'll see what ends up happening. Whether, sure. But we'll, we'll be making all these little like caches of samples drop like a few little piles on the surface. We then have to send a rover to collect them yeah. and a rocket that will Launch from Mars, launch from Mars to bring it home, yes. which again is something we have never done. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting um, because everyone's thinking like, yes, this is the first time we'll bring something back from space. Um, so it's pretty cool, but makes uh, our jobs really hard because we're trying to design something to requirements that aren't really made yet. They're like, well, we might want to do this, and we might want to do this. So we have to keep the option space really open. Yeah. 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 And um, what's your what's your educational background? What did you study? Um, so I studied mechanical engineering. Um, I grew up in Hawaii, uh, born and raised there, and I was like, I have to get out of here, which you wouldn't think about when growing up in Hawaii, but I think if you grow up in any small town. It's a small town. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's a beautiful island, and it's out in the middle of a huge ocean, but it's a small... I've been there a couple of times, and I know people from there, and it's... Yeah. It's... Tiny. Yeah, it's tiny. Um, as a teenager, I didn't feel like there was a big queer scene, so I was very excited to get out for college. I moved to the East Coast mm -hmm. um, and went to school in Boston. Oh. Um, and I went to Northeastern. Um, and then through that school, I was able to do like work internships and study at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I ended up at JPL. I did uh, an internship or a co-op oh, yeah. here, and then absolutely loved it and then just tried my best uh, to come back so I got my bachelor's in mechanical engineering uh, in 2016 and then got hired on full-time that same year so I just oh because I, I met you before 2016 I know yes. I know that I interacted with you so you were an intern then yes oh I, I didn't know that okay yeah. yeah JPL has some pretty exciting internship programs um, uh, and uh, I know a lot of people who have done them. so what was your experience I mean when you when you first came to JPL as an intern yeah. Did you meet, find the queer scene at JPL? Did you meet a few people that way? Um, I actually didn't. So when I first came to JPL as an intern, I was still like figuring out a lot of things. Um, like I had been out as a lesbian for a very long time, but I hadn't. I had only just come out as trans, mm -hmm. and only to my friends, and my family had no idea. And so coming to California was kind of like. I'm starting fresh, I'm starting new, like, I'm going to try out these pronouns and see what happens. And what pronouns do you prefer? Um, I use he, him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was difficult at the time because I hadn't done anything to, like, medically transition at all. So, you know, I was dressing in a sort of stereotypical masculine way. And I had told my supervisor, who thankfully um, was kind of, like, the only queer person I knew at the time on lab, Helped. Still, that's nice. Yeah, so which helped. Um, and so I told her, you know, my pronouns and what I was trying to do, and she was like, I'll let the group know. Like, I'll, I'll tell everyone before you get here so that they won't mess it up when they meet you, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Um, which I appreciated. Um, it was still hard, I think, when people initially met me, because I think they just forgot. And uh, at the time, I just had a very, like, high voice. And so people would first kind of clock me as a guy, and then I would speak, and then be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I assumed this thing. Yeah. So 
sorry, we got some background. Yeah. So, I mean, your 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 supervisor sort of, I guess, I guess advocating is the right word, but but sort of laying the groundwork for you to uh, to, to for for the group to not feel awkward. That was a right. useful thing. Yeah, she had asked me, which was nice, like how I wanted to approach okay. it. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty non-confrontational, and I don't like to make a, a big, I don't know, deal out of things, mm -hmm. maybe. So I was like, let's just do it in the most low-key way possible. So I think she just, like, sent it out in, like, a group announcement email with a bunch of other announcements. Okay. Which maybe ended up <laughs> not being the right way to do that. Hmm. Um, so what I ended up doing as an intern, um, I never found, like, the GPL your network at that time okay um so but i did fix that <laughs> yeah but i did find other uh like queer people just in la mm -hmm. um of course and then i just had to have conversations with people at work about my pronouns like we would have an interaction and i wouldn't feel comfortable saying something at the time um so i would email them after and be like hey you know i really enjoyed this conversation we had thanks for all your help by the way these are my pronouns, you know, in the future, so you can use them mm -hmm. when referring to me with other people. And everyone, you know, was super uh, responsive and really helpful and nice about it. Um, Good. No one was ever like, oh, what does that mean? A lot of people wanted to know, like, more and, like, were looking for, like, resources. It can, it can be a good opener to, yeah. to, to or a any discussion of your sexuality at work, which is not normally part of our work in yeah. any way. It's, 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 it's not what we're there for, but, yeah. but... But people do have lives, and they have, you know, questions. Maybe somebody in their life, yeah. or, or, or or they themselves have questions. So, um, you know, having something that breaks that ice, even if it's even if it's telling them something that, like, hey, by the way, please refer to me this way. Right. Then there, but once once you've gotten over that barrier, then it's easier for people to. Yes, definitely. Um, so one thing that I ended up doing was like putting my pronouns in my email signature mm -hmm. so whenever I sent emails also being in California in a oh. primarily Spanish speaking place like my name ends in A and so a lot of people will just assume that, uh. like even from emails when we haven't interacted in person mm -hmm. um, that I know it's typically as, a feminine ending yeah a feminine ending for a name so they'll you know assume that I'm female and then I'll have to like these are my pronouns it, um, it is Amelia your birth name yes Amelia okay. is my birth name um, in uh, Sri Lankan culture where my parents are from, it's a, actually a gender neutral name. Mm -hmm. It kind of changes uh, gender depending on how you pronounce it. Oh. Um, and so I've sort of like Americanized the way I say my name. And But for my parents, I think it was helpful for them to like start pronouncing it in a slightly different way to like what what are the variations um so there's like i mean the which is like a little more of a mm -hmm. the, the well, schwa sound, sound again. yeah um but it's still spelled the same and then there's amila which is a little more okay long a okay yeah. oh. and i say amila where i long i long get the i and then just like don't really know what to do with the a <laughs> um but yeah i thought about changing my name and um I think I'm comfortable with my name right now. Mm -hmm. I knew that it would also probably upset my parents, and I was pretty happy with it, so I was like, I'm just not going to change it. And um, have your parents have been supportive? Yeah, my parents have been super supportive, that's which great. has been awesome. I know that's not the story you typically hear, um, so I feel very grateful for that. I was super worried for a while about it, because I was raised Catholic, and... Um, my parents are like fairly Catholic, um, but um, also just growing up in a culture like in Sri Lanka, like they don't know any trans people. Like, mm. They don't. They're not in that, to that community. Like my dad, you know, confessed to me like when he was growing up that he used to like bully kids at school, you know, who were like feminine or gay, um, and. You know, he was kind of like, I think this is just kind of like, almost like an amazing karmic thing to happen to be like, you know, now you've been given this chance to do the right thing. Mm, yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, you know, I, that's really great. I'm glad that you feel bad for what you did and yeah. also that you're doing the right thing now. Mm -hmm. um, 
so he was the person I was worried about the most because he can be very uh, traditional when it comes to um, family values and in a lot of uh, I think Asian family settings there's a lot about saving face and presenting your family in a certain way that yeah. like, everything is perfect and you know you we have an engineer and a doctor and a lawyer um, collect the whole set yeah exactly and so for this to kind of come out um, and he has like a kind of prestigious reputation within the Sri Lankan community in Hawaii it was I think he had a choice he could he could take the traditional route and 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 sort of you know deny or try to hide it or he yeah. could accept it as a point of pride yes. that he was a big enough person to um, you know be proud of you and, and, and celebrate that. Is that yeah. the route that he chose to take? Yes. Um, That's he so good. Is a big advocate for me and I know that they've lost friendships and mm. uh, they don't, I don't know, I feel like they don't want to be as transparent with me about what how it's affected them but I know that it's been difficult and they've had to kind of push back against some of their closest friends to be like, you know, sure the Bible says that but it also says like this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. You're not doing any of those things. Like, you know, this isn't wrong. Mm -hmm. um, Love thy neighbor and all that. Message. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And like, my dad will just introduce me as his son, even to people who I've known as a child, and they'll be like, didn't you have three daughters? And he's like, nope, two daughters and a son. And just kind of keep going. And sometimes it requires a little more exp exp explanation, but generally good. So that's awesome and yeah. I, I, I it's I'm actually getting a little misty eyed because it's 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 a yeah. beautiful story and I'm so glad that you have that support in your family yes um, uh, I mean recently there's been some rather negative stories in the news the the, the, the the Trump administration you know instituting a ban on trans people in the military and then Japan uh, recently passed or the Supreme Court uh, upheld a law that requires trans people to undergo sterilization before they can uh, have their, um, their physical changes. Mm -hmm. um, so in, since you've been in Southern California or at JPL, or even when you were in college, have you experienced you know, a lot of, I mean, let's just talk about JPL. Have you talk, experienced any negativity? Um, not necessarily negativity from JPL in mm -hmm. any way. I feel like from an administrative standpoint, a lot of people are very supportive. Mm -hmm. And one of, I mean, two of JPL's core values are diversity and inclusion. And yeah. within the recent years especially, they've been trying to do a lot um, to make sure that the lab is diverse and make sure that people feel included and they've been taking steps. Do you know, do you know how many trans people there, I mean, obviously there are no statistics on this, but you've met a number of other uh, yeah, we tend to find each other. <laughs> sure. Uh, but I mean, there's trans people, there's gender non-binary people, um, you know, gay lives. The whole alphabet is represented mm -hmm. there. And yes. um, I, mean, I think JPL has been very progressive in the way that it treats LGBTQ people. I mean, from the 90s, there were people advocating for domestic partnerships before right. domestic partnership was a thing. Right. Um, so um, do you have any advice for, for, for people who are... You know, especially going into STEM fields, um, uh, and like, because in general, my experience has been academics right. are, yeah. are 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 you know tend to have a pretty open mind when it comes to you know alternative sexualities, and they recognize it as something that is part of you, but not really relevant to the work you do. Right. Exactly. Uh, has that been your experience, and, and would you would you have any advice to give? You know, people entering college or, 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 or looking for careers in this area? Yeah, I mean, I feel like one of the things I love about JPL is the people, and so I've had really great experiences with my coworkers, and I'm very close with them, so I'm pretty open about my sexuality and gender, mm -hmm. and they've responded positively, but it took a while to get there to feel like uh, comfortable enough to bring it up. So, make, so make, making that initial effort yeah. Difficult though it was, has resulted in a much more pleasant experience. Experience. Yes. Oh, good. I've had like a couple of like awkward experiences. Like I've definitely had awkward experiences. You know, everyone can be well intentioned, but it doesn't mm. necessarily <laughs> translate well. Yeah. Um, like I knew, I know they're coming from a good place, but you're kind of just saying things that are really problematic, and it's, you know, it's hard to be the person to explain that every time, um, and be like, you know you could do some baseline research, you could ask someone else, you don't have to ask me. Um, but 
I'm happy to do that. Um, I don't think it's necessary for like every trans person to make it their objective to educate the masses. But I, you know, I'm in a place of privilege of, you know, having this platform, being like supported by my family, supported by my friends. Um, I'm not one for like big brand statements. So what I started doing, honestly, was I wear a lot of patches. I wear a lot of buttons. Uh, so on my work badge, I have Trans Lives Matter. I have like a big button that just says like gay AF. Um, and just like other, you know, semi hints that something. Oh, there's no, like, there's no yeah. semi about it. That's pretty <laughs> overt and I love it. Yeah, it's just like ways where like I don't need to say anything, but people will get clued in. Um, a lot of people have asked about, oh, like I've seen your pronouns in your email signature. Um, that's a really brilliant way to, to, to go yeah. about it, I think, especially because yeah. everybody uses email these days. And it can be, it, it's not directed at someone. It, it, I mean, you, you mentioned that in emails you, you said to people, oh, by the way, here right. are my pronouns. Right. But you just have it in your signature, which yeah. you know most people do see, yeah. is um, you know a way for people to be informed without feeling like they've been told. Exactly. And uh, it's been great, like a lot of cis allies have been like, you know what, I'm going to put that in my email signature too, because you know, in a way like you're sort of adding yourself by putting your pronouns in your email signature because not everybody does it, mm -hmm. but my supervisor does it now, all of the supervisors in my section do really? it. Really? Um, yeah, as a part of like... Oh my god, that's great! Places. Um, people that I work with have noticed and like have been like, oh, like I'm going to tell my entire team to do that too. So it's starting to spread um, to make it like a little less, I don't know, like Aww. obvious. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah. Um, and it's important, you know, like you can assume anything about anyone looking at them. Like now, people can look at me and say like, oh, like, yes, you're a man um, and have no idea, which, you know, for some trans people is really great. And for non-binary people, people will assume one thing about their gender just based off of what they look like. And they can say, you know, my pronouns are they, them, actually, and it's neither. So, um, I have a question. Um, for, for people who are, uh, transmasculine would be the term. Sure. Um, uh, I guess I don't know if there's any you know idea about the book. do what, what's the what's the level of people who, who identify as specifically as trans masculine you know and and are um, I guess public for lack of a better word about the fact that they are trans versus people who transition to masculine and then just want to pass as masculine. Yeah. And I, I say passing, and that has sort of a negative racial connotation yeah. um, but, or, or in general, but but th yeah. you, you understand what I'm asking. Yeah, I do. And it's, I think it's it's difficult. I mean, it's so It's a personal to, choice. Yeah, it's every trans experience is so individual. Mm -hmm. Like, mine will not be the same as anyone else's mm. necessarily. Um, and I'm sure there's like certain things that maybe we all can learn from, um, but you know, everyone's support system at home, you know, race and class backgrounds are all different and that yeah. can all affect the way you transition. Um, so there's plenty of people who identify as trans men who will like never go on testosterone because that's just not something they want to do or medically something they can't do. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't make them any less trans or a man. Sure. Um, and that can be really difficult for people to understand. Um, I don't, I don't know if I like have any statistics off the top of my head. Sure, of, no. You know how many people um, are like out about the fact that they're trans. I do know a lot of trans men who are like, I'm a, I'm a man. I don't want to be called a trans man because mm. I'm a man now. And like, they almost do prefer it when people are like, you're a man, and like aren't any wiser mm -hmm. uh, for it. Um, and that's totally valid. Sure. I think for me, it's been hard with the transition to feel a part of the queer community um, because I now pass in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you know, in a relationship with someone who is very feminine and, uh, you know, is identifies for a while as a cis female and so when we're out on the street holding hands like people are like uh oh, that straight couple and I'm like that is not a term that has ever felt no. like it applies to me. Um, but yeah so that like kind of queer invisibility can feel real. I mean it's the same with bisexuality. 
Um, and so for me, I try and be like as out and proud as possible because it's like the only way that I can feel connected to the queer community and feel valid. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you're in an area where that's not safe, it can be a lot more yeah. difficult. Um, but yeah. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to you know uh, make mention of or, or or tell people about your experience or your um, you know? Any further advice, or I mean, I love the idea of the the the, the, the uh, pronouns in the email signature, and I'm so excited to hear that that your group and other people are, are picking that up as a thing yeah. to do. Yeah, um, I mean, as for like other advice for anyone who's just like looking for work, I had made the decision early on where I I had an advisor who told me I had like an LGBTQ plus group on my resume. And I left it on there, even though they told me to take it off. Mm. A lot of engineering companies are very conservative. Mm. And in but Massachusetts, like Boston is liberal, but Massachusetts as a whole can be very conservative. Yeah. And, you know, she was worried about, you know, me finding a job, which I appreciate. But I was like, honestly, I'm kind of using this. As, as a filter. A, yeah, like as a litmus test to be like, does this company care or not? Yeah. Um, and that can, you know, kind of give you a clue in. And then it's sort of about when you're there, company culture, um, when I was going for my interviews, um, you know, I didn't have myself as trans during the interview because I was worried. Mm -hmm. um, if you feel comfortable enough, you can bring it up after. I was kind of like, I'm gonna wait until I have the job and then they can't like fire me kind of a thing. Right. I was worried. Um, obviously, like I found that JPL was a very accepting place and I sort of made the active choice to move to California, which I knew was a more progressive state and mm -hmm. had more trans protections than other states. Um, which, I mean, can suck. Like, California is an expensive place to live. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but it was a choice that I made. And so kind of just doing your research, if you're a trans person and if you're looking for a job yeah, will, um, in STEM yes. or if you're thinking about going into STEM, kind of yeah. knowing where it's safe and where you can feel comfortable is important and there's... Yeah, and and co companies can have broad company policies about how exactly. uh, LGBTQ, that's certainly something you can research. But knowing how the particular people you'll be working with, the ones who read your resume and say, yeah. yes, I want to hire to work with me, yeah. their personal attitudes are a very important thing to feel yes. out. Yeah, and that's why it was huge for me to know that my supervisor, um, you know, was queer so I could, you know, I at least knew Mm -hmm. that there was something there even within the LGBT community there can be still um, not a lot of inclusion for the T and so I wasn't yeah. quite sure how it was going to go but uh, she was super super awesome and she's been a great so advocate great. So. Great. thank you so yeah. much and um, thank you for everyone who's been listening to all these videos and yeah. please ask uh, questions if you have, um, I can pass on information to Amila and um, yeah, anyone can reach out to me through Troy. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.